Joining us now exclusively, Carlos Watson, Aussie Media's CEO. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good to see you. Uh, thanks for coming in. Let's let's start with the status of Aussie as we sit right now. Reports that the company shut down on Friday. Is that true? Is, is the company shut down or are you still open for business? You know, we're going to open for business. So uh, we're making news today. Uh, this is our Lazarus moment, if you will. This is our Tylenol moment. Um, last week was traumatic. It was difficult. Um, heartbreaking in many ways. And at the end of the week, we did suspend operations with a plan to wind down. But as we spent time over the weekend, we talked to advertising partners. We talked to some of our readers, some of our viewers, our listeners, our investors. I think Ozzy is part of this moment. And it's not going to be easy. Um, but I think what we do with newsletters, what we do with TV shows, original TV shows, podcasts, and more, I think has a place. Let's talk about this phone call. I mean, did, did you know that that your partner, the co-founder of this company, was going to impersonate a, a YouTube executive on a on a call? Yeah, no. And it's it, it's sad, and it's um, it's difficult. It was wrong. Um, obviously, they figured it out very quickly. But and- here's the thing: someone would wonder, perhaps. I mean, you, you're on a call with Goldman Sachs. You're trying to score forty million dollars in funding. Mm-hmm. Why, why were you not on the call, and how did you not have any knowledge of, of the call? You know, part of the fundraising process, you end up talking to a lot of people, okay. and I'm not on every call. And there are lots of these reference calls that happen. They, I think, probably ended up talking to three, four, maybe five uh, of our references. They also talked to members of the team. They talked to some of our other investors. And so there are a fair number of things that are involved, and you're not a part of all of them. But over a three-month period of time, I spent a lot of time with them as part of the process. As you know, there, there could be some serious legal implications yes. with regards to, to that call. Have yeah. you heard from the FBI? Have you heard from law enforcement at this point? I, d- I definitely you? haven't. But, but here's what I will say. Um, uh, that's a tragic situation. It's horrible. Nothing good about that at all. I am grateful, though, that Goldman didn't invest because that would have been the worst of all. And several months later, to Goldman's enormous credit, uh, they stepped forward and began a new advertising partnership with us. And so I think part of that was a recognition that as tragic and not okay as that was, that the larger company, Ozzy, has done some pretty special things when it comes to premium content, forward-looking content, and really a diverse set of audiences. Let's let's talk about the company for just a moment. I mean, you're announcing that you are, in fact, open for business. But it's not just that phone call. I mean, there, there were reports that uh, Ozzy had been inflating numbers for years, digital traffic numbers. There were billboards in Los Angeles that you had to take down after Amazon claimed that you were making claims on those billboards that weren't entirely true. Uh, your your show on, on, on YouTube, uh, you, I guess, said it one point that the show was going to be on A&E, but it wasn't going to be on A&E. Why would anyone trust Carlos Watson moving forward? Yeah, uh, great question and fair question and heartbreaking question because I'm used to people trusting me. I'm the son of teachers. You've known me for a number of years. We've interacted in a variety of ways, and I once worked here at NBC uh, as part of the MSNBC family. I think here's what I would say. Last week, I got some incredibly bad advice. I got advice from some crisis communications folks to go silent. I should not have done that. What ended up over the next week was some half-truths, um, in some cases, some real things that we did uh, not well and that we should have done better and different, and we will own them. We'll own them around data, around marketing, around other places. But, but I wish I had stepped up. I wish I had engaged. And part of my reason of being here with you today is to engage on those things, including some of the things you mentioned. Let me take the A&E thing as an example. Originally, we did conceive of this show for A&E. We've had a two-year partnership with A&E. We've done shows for A&E, for Lifetime, for the History Channel. And originally, we talked to them about it. They moved too slowly on it. We notified them that we weren't going to do it there. We were going to move it to YouTube. The gentleman who you mentioned and who was part of yeah. that story knew that we had moved it to YouTube. And yet, and yet now comes forward and says, I didn't know, I didn't know. Of course he knew. Okay. Let's, let's accept that as fact. What about this, this Sharon and Ozzy Osbourne uh, at one point? I mean, that's an, that, yeah, but but yeah, you said that yeah. they were investors. Yeah. Sharon Osbourne last week on CNBC said she never, she's never met Carlos Watson. So what's true there? Um, So it's true that she hasn't met me, um, and it's true that um, as a result of her suing us, so she sued us over the name Ozzy Fest, which is our music and ideas festival. She had Oz Fest. The agreement was that we were going to give her shares in the company. And the way I think about it, I think the way a lot of people think about it, if you own shares in a company, you're an investor. Now, she may not have liked that word, and let's be really clear. I'm not going to raise money by telling sophisticated people that Sharon Osbourne's an investor. No smart investor is going to say, oh, great, you got Sharon Osbourne. So I think I said that clearly in the cases there. But again, Craig, what I want to say is that the last couple of days gave a lot of people a chance to take cheap shots. And again, that's not to say that there aren't things that we could do better. We need to do better on data. We need to do better on marketing. I think there's some things we could do better on leadership and culture. Let's talk about data for a second. Have you ever paid 
for digital traffic. Uh, like everyone, 100%. And, you know, this is such a good conversation to get into because guess who else pays? NBC. NBC advertises on Ozzy. NBC advertises. But not, our, not to get into news. the weeds here. Sure. Uh, one of the knocks over the last few days is that Ozzy had spent millions of dollars buying content yeah. that pops up mm -hmm. that, that you can't escape, that's mm -hmm. popping up behind your browser. Mm -hmm. Is that true? I, I don't know about that. But, okay. but, but, here, but here's what Ozzy does. We are unwilling to take our smart reporting, our terrific videos, our really good podcasts, and let the algorithm decide who gets to see it. Why should we do that? Hey, hang on one second. If we want to make sure that really interesting young audiences see our good work, whether we're profiling a young Amanda Gorman, a young Trevor Noah, a young Issa Rae, or other folks, sure. I think it's smart of us. HBO does it. Spotify does it. Uber does it. You definitely say, I want this audience, and you've got to invest in marketing to do it. Before I let you go, I want to ask you about something here that's, that's personal to both of us. Yeah. Because following the, the racial justice protests um, last summer, there was um, a call for advertisers to spend lots more money with black-owned media. You got some of that money. And over the weekend, I talked to some folks who were pretty annoyed um, that, that you got millions, and they really didn't get anything. Do you, do you feel some sort of way that, that perhaps... Maybe you shouldn't have got as much money from advertisers. To... Why would I feel that way? Well, I mean, I, I mean the I, business I, I, collapsed I, last week. I, I, the business is... You've, you've, look, got 90, you, you raised almost $100 million, and what do you have to show for it? Um, what we have to show for it is five newsletters, a dozen TV shows, either on the air, on Hulu, Amazon, PBS, BBC. We won an Emmy last year, as you know. The, the four-episode series, uh, I don't know. Sure. A, a six podcast, including Cracking the Top Ten, and three festivals. You know, the top so it's not a house of cards, it's, because it's, you know, you know that's, it, that's been the claim and, over and the know, last, and that, over and that, the last week. And, and, Craig, you, among others, know what a horrible thing that is, and you know how slanderous that is to do that. And when you saw people start to put my name in league with Elizabeth Holmes, who never had a real product, who raised, from the, who raised billions of dollars, when, again, we have five premium newsletters that goes out to millions of people, a dozen TV shows, including winning an okay. Emmy, right? That's not a house of cards. And so, look, we're back. It's not going to be easy, but I hope if people who's, now... Who's backing you? If, who's, if people, who's, who's if people, funding the... If people now know the name, if people now know the name Ozzy, O-Z-Y, yeah. I hope they'll sign up for our newsletter. Of course. Yeah. Who's, who's funding you right now? Can you tell us that? I can't. Who's no. on the board? Um, myself, Michael Moe. Okay. Yeah. All right. Carlos yeah. Watson. Appreciate you having me. Thanks for coming in Thank and answering you. the question. CEO uh, Carlos Watson from Oswald. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.